and uh, very happy thanks to JNU Academics for arranging such a wonderful team and inviting Suraj to for discussing a common paper, a book that he's writing. Um, uh, and the canvas is huge. Uh, the way Suraj uh, is discussing two different continents, two different histories, uh, and the idea of literature, and how literature has the capacity or possibilities to connect two distinct communities and make sense of solidarity and possible justice uh, uh, in the coming times. Uh, so this huge canvas, and from, I don't know how to make sense of uh, such a big historical uh, mode of to deal with literature. Probably a person who has uh, has a literature background uh, can do justice to such comparative analysis of two literary traditions, the Blacks and the Dalits. Uh, but let me find something from my uh, discipline, political science, uh, and try to make some uh, assessment of what Suraj is trying to argue. Uh, one is, of course, uh, the, the word data, or the idea of right. Uh, in Suraj's work, it appears that uh, it is almost appearing like an entitlement, that uh, the writing should be seen as a human entitlement, that we all are born with intellectual possibilities and capacities, and for a very, very long time, that entitlement, that right to think and write, was denied to a community or communities for a very, very long time. And therefore, probably the oppressed literature is a very, very modern or young discipline in that sense. For a very long time, probably the power of haters or writing, capacity to write or intellectualize something uh, was uh, exclusively, uh, exclusively controlled by a, a particular class or community. That, that uh, uh, diversification of that the democratization that everybody can write. Especially the oppressed communities can express their experiences, their feelings, their vision for the world. Not just as, as Suraj was suggesting, not just the anxieties and, and traumas and miseries, but even the vision for the world. That possibility is there in the writing and therefore uh, the literature, what they call the literature of the oppressed people, Dalits or the Blacks. Uh, come up with what they call almost a modernist virtue that uh, modernity in general or enlightenment or for that matter renaissance or reformation or French revolution or industrial revolution created a model around which there was a possibility that now come every person, every body has the capacity to intellectualize, to think and write and claim their space in the modern times. This is an extraordinary time, and therefore, probably for the oppressed communities, writing about their experiences and thinking about the greater world was a very, very young, uh, 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 very young, you can say, um, development. For a very long time, in the probably human history, there was exclusion, continuous exclusion of certain people, groups, women, for that matter, that they cannot write or think or intellectualize certain uh, experiences and the idea of the modern world. And therefore, uh, uh, this idea of literature, that two literatures from, coming from two distinct continents, two groups which were historically marginalized, oppressed and, and mutilated, these people are now coming and writing their own histories, their own experiences, their strategies and violence about, about their uh, uh, past and what they expect from the future. And therefore, there is very much possibility that they can collide. They can speak to each other. Why? Because the idea is borrowing the source for such claim is coming from the modernist discourse that we all are equal. There, there is human entitlements available for all of us and therefore, if that, that there is a denial of that, if there is any restriction to those human rights, probably the oppressed people will think on the similar track that there will be claim for rights, 
there will be demand for recognition, there will be demand for, uh, for self-respect and dignity, and there will be also demand that for a very, very long time, particular kind of people has dominated and controlled this globe. Now it is the time that the oppressed people can take the battle in their own hands and change the world. A revolution is possible. Marx was one of the major thinkers on those ground that till a particular class control each and every aspect of social, economic and political life, probably modernity, capitalism for that matter, provided you that opportunity to think, create a new consciousness, and out of that consciousness, a socialist revolution is possible. Similar uh, tendencies were there in the other office communist blacks or Dalits, that for a very, very long time, we are kind of condemned to live a peculiar life. Uh, a life without any self-respect or, for that matter, any good recognition. And therefore, it is the now, it is the time where we will not succumb to that condemned nature, but try to change and challenge that and emerge as intellectuals, as public leaders, as spokesperson of that community, and also the upholders of power. And uh, Suraj was right to when he was introducing people like uh, the uh, like uh, bhakti poets for that matter or those who are claiming for spiritual equality okay there that that essence is there uh, or for that matter ambedkar when he suggested that we will be the part of the modern institutions or kanshiram when he suggested that not only part of the public institutions but also power holders so this journey it is a, just a normal human journey it is, there is nothing extraordinary to that. It appears extraordinary, why? Because for a very, very long time, we have, we are habituated, we are, we are, uh, we are basically <coughs> condemned to see that these people cannot claim power, recognition, or self-respect. And therefore, when they claim, it appears as an aberration, it appears an accident, it appears like a revolution. But in literature, especially in the literature, it is just a human claim. It's a normal human claim to get recognized, to claim for power, to get elected to representative bodies. There is nothing revolutionary in that. Is it a revolutionary claim that I want to become a MLO or MP in Parliament? Is it a revolutionary claim? It is not. But still, as I said, that somewhere uh, this uh, accusation uh, that often been seen and probably Suraj is extremely right to pinpoint the, the kind of uh, uh, marginalization or a condemnation of this, this particular process of identity politics or a kind of a narrow uh, claim for claim about the miseries and, uh, 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 and other, other uh, demands. Now, uh, because it is so huge what Suraj was claiming, these two continents was so huge and we are almost giving a glimpse that what has happened in the last 200 to 300 years. Uh, and therefore probably uh, we don't get a sense that where to stop and where to uh, engage with this kind of a uh, huge uh, historical, chronological way to deal with two distinct communities. Uh, I will probably suggest that probably uh, this idea that uh, there are thinkers like Manavan Khede or uh, uh, Pantamani or Janadan Bhagwan, uh, those who have actually contributed to think about these two communities in very, very sincere manner. Others were independently operating at their own spaces. Or for that matter, uh, a, a deliberation between Dubwa and Ambedkar for that matter. Uh, they have correspondence. And even Ambedkar was thinking about the, the black world in a very, very sincere manner. So somewhere concentrating on that profile, suggesting that there are there are intellectuals within the oppressed communities who are thinking about that solidarity. The rest are independent operation, uh, uh, they, they are independently operating. And therefore, probably the Panthers movement become very, very crucial. And I think uh, Suraj is absolutely doing that particular job, uh, uh, making Panthers as one of the um, uh, cornerstone of his paper, that it is the Panthers movement that created this bigger global aspiration that they will not only be sticking with what, what they call local claims for recognition and participation in political sphere, 
but will also make kind of a bigger revolutionary claim to collaborate and make solidarity with the global oppressed community. This is extremely uh, uh, well documented. And therefore, uh, when Dasal was reading Fanu or for that matter many other revolutions at that part of time and is quoting Sartre and Camus in his writings, he had, was extremely international at that part of time. He was not thinking at, uh, as a local that is activist or an or a, or a, uh, uh, or intellectual. Uh, he was thinking Rambo, he was, think, he, was, he was referring Sartre and Camus, he was referring Marx and Lenin. His approach was international. And therefore, there are tendencies and capacities within this particular discourse to escape that local contamination, which was condemned to live in that small, ghettoized uh, local, and to escape and create a global imagination. And that possibility is there in the literature. That they are not localized, they are not uh, small or what they call particular, this, this distinction that often been offered. Local and to escape and create a global imagination. And that possibility is there in the literature. That they are not localized, they are not uh, small or what they call particular, this, this distinction that often we offer. Uh, and from that particular location, they are imagining the, the higher world or global world. Uh, and therefore probably a concentration on those movements or intellectuals or leaders that were thinking deeply about these global aspirations, that is, as a part of the global office community, borrowing a lot from uh, the left uh, Marxist uh, uh, literature, or black movement, or even for that matter, feminist, or even for that matter, of Fano's work. So there were these aspirations and call to engage with the outer world. And therefore, probably the other aspect which is part of uh, Suraj's work, the other uh, uh, part of the Suraj's work is somewhere uh, 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 divert us from the core idea. The core idea, as I said, the, to think about the, the blacks and the Dalits uh, as, a, as, a, as a companions, as the as a collaborators, or for that matter, the possibility of unity and solidarity between two distinct groups. Uh, the other part, like for that matter, the history of RPI or the division between Panthers, I think that somewhere diverts the attention or the concern of the overall people. Um, uh, just two or three uh, smaller points so that one can have a discussion on this. One is um, that most of the oppressed communities, like so far, uh, borrowed a lot from the modernist discourse. The idea of fraternity, equality, freedom, dignity, justice are mostly borrowed from the Western modernist discourse or what they call the Enlightenment tradition. Uh, and probably Ambedkar was that kind of a modernist uh, uh, personality or hero or an icon who suggested that probably the progressive development of the world is reaching towards that end where probably tomorrow there will be a bigger world where equality and dignity for all is very much possible. And, uh, and of course the making of the constitution was somewhere endorsement of that field that we are entering into a modernist uh, progressive welfareist region. Now the question is that though there was this possibility there was such a wonderful revolutionary language of democracy and uh, republicanism. Uh, Ambedkar becomes the spokesperson of that great uh, uh, virtues or ethical uh, persuasion. Uh, you will find that Panthers is using And uh, Suraj was right to suggest that the non statist way to deal with uh, uh, social and political life. Uh, that an, 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 an argument against the state later welfare. Uh, not to become uh, what we call uh, a subject of the state and making a bigger call for a revolution even borrowing from the Marxist tendencies. Okay? How to understand that complexity? To call, the, to call Panthers as a revolutionary force post-independence. 
where the cost torsion is already been applicable, is already applied, and Ambedkar became one of the spokespersons of that constitutional validity. That it is now valid, and people can, or the office people can borrow uh, or can uh, can trust the modern state institution, including constitution, to have their own welfare. And therefore, uh, that question is one. Second, in the current times, uh, like I think Suraj is again very right uh, and very expressive uh, to suggest that there was a dis almost a disjuncture or a, uh, or a rupture between the Dalits and the and the uh, and the, uh, the blacks. The Dalits were seen taking inspiration from their path, but blacks had probably no idea about the existence of the untouchables or the Dalits till the late seventies. But probably this has changed. In today's context, when we read somebody called Isabel Nicholson, her recent work, not recent, her earlier work, Caste, you will find that she is thinking to understand race, not from the conventional uh, available literary sources, but thinking that why not to borrow from the Indian condition of caste and understand the idea of race through a caste premise, applying Ambed and Indian traditional values. That caste is a, is, a, is a psychological sector which discriminate, marginalize, create compartments, create hierarchies, and create violence within those hierarchies. Okay? That idea, and so she was suggesting that probably the racial conjure, the way race has been organized, that this model is an appropriate model to understand the racial uh, hierarchies in today's time. And therefore, somewhere the the the, the uh, arrival of what you call a Dalit perspective to deal with the RS question. Uh, th third is of course the solidarity issue. Probably this uh, within the Indian office community there is no solidarity. Dalits and Adivasis are not seeing each other in a very sincere way. Uh, it is minorities and Dalits do not have that kind of a very powerful uh, uh, sense of solidarity that they can have a political drop. Or other working classes, women, or for that matter, Dalits do not see eye to eye often. And therefore, uh, there are uh, set ethical claims with, with each other, but the possibility to create uh, a solid solidarity, a political block, is so difficult even in our own territory where it's a, it's a population of jobless people. Obviously, Dalits, Adidas, is Muslims, women. It's a population of jobless people in that condition. Even the, the, the solidarity is not possible. Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, on what grounds, on what principles we are expecting that solidarity will be, uh, will be possible. Uh, so, just because I got a chip, uh, I will not take much time and I'll uh, ask, uh, uh, ask, ask Suraj to uh, come and Thank you very much.